Indian IT as a business has been in a state of flux for the past few years. Client spends have changed, legacy businesses are suffering, and digital is the new buzzword. This meant reskilling employees, developing new products, and targeting new clients. The investments are slowly yielding results, uh, with the Indian outsourcers getting a grip over digital and client spending more. But it's nowhere close to the double-digit growth figures posted in the years gone by. So is that era over and should Indian tech companies be happy with high, high single-digit growth numbers? And what could happen in the interim to valuations and business metrics if indeed that's the new norm? Let's pose that question to industry veteran Vineet Nair, former CEO of HCL Technologies, uh, who joins us right now on the show. Vineet, good having you. Thanks much for joining in. You know, there has been a sharp pullback uh, globally in IT stocks and local IT firms as well have come off except for the last couple of days. Is it a recognition of an imminent global slowdown or a valuation check or is it something else? Does something worry you? So I, I'm not an expert in valuation. You know, every time I've got it wrong in terms of if I think the stocks are going to move up, they go down. So I'm not an expert on that, but I'll tell you two or three things which worry me. Uh, for the last two, three years, a lot of people have been putting uh, old wine in new bottles and selling them as digital. And I think that that people have understood that the digital is not digital. Uh, digital is repainted digital. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, if really 30% of your revenue is digital and digital is growing at 30% uh, year on year, then, you know, 9% growth will come from 30% of your revenue. And therefore, double digit uh, growth should not be uh, guidance, but it should be in the upper upper teens. Uh, so, you know, there is an issue that the a lot of digital revenue is rewired digital, uh, which the market, I think, I presume correctly was concerned about. Uh, the second was they did not know how the visa regulation will play out. Uh, actually, they knew how the visa regulation will play out. There was an uncertainty on how Indian IT will uh, reorganize itself and would they be able to handle it or would they not be able to handle it. Uh, so that was uh, the second valid concern. And I think on that count, Indian IT seems to be handling it right now, uh, hiring from each other, but a lot of announcements I'm seeing uh, where they are investing uh, hundreds of millions of dollars to try and build capability. Uh, so there is, there is a genuine uh, reason to be concerned about execution of that intention, but at least the intention uh, is right. I think there is a third issue which the market is concerned about, which is the legacy business. Uh, the legacy business continues to be very large. The multi, uh, you know, all the large deals which we are announcing, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, uh, are wins for a company, but are losses for somebody else because, you know, there is a... Uh, mixy churn which is happening, the first time outsourcing deals are becoming less and less. And therefore, while it is somebody else's gain, somebody announced a $2 billion win and $1 billion win, but it is also a $1 billion loss or a $2 billion loss for somebody else. Fortunately, there are still a lot of global companies which are losing tremendous market share. Uh, so that that's, that's good for the Indian IT. But at the same time, there's a lot of churn which is happening within the Indian IT. So prices are going down, you have to drive the efficiency up. So I think those were, I presume, those were some of the concerns the market had. Uh, but they're slowly settling down because in this quarter, I'm seeing uh, 40, 50,000 people being added by the top six companies. So obviously it indicates the fact that uh, they are seeing growth. Uh, otherwise, uh, year on year, such a large addition of manpower, even if it is on-site manpower, uh, is a reflection of positive positivity within the Indian IT, despite the three headwinds, uh, three concerns which the market uh, is correctly uh, anticipating and having. The, the visa issue and you know the fact that tech unemployment rate in the U.S. is at record low levels. What were, and therefore, you know the kind of costs that companies will have to have for personnel. How big is this issue? I, I think, Deera, this is the most important question you've asked today, and I'm reminded by ITC. Uh, ITC, when the cigarettes were becoming a bad, uh, in a bad word, uh, diversification was not an option, and they were very aggressive on diversification. Now, the fact that your legacy business uh, comes under threat. In this case, not the legacy business in terms of application outsourcing, but the way you outsource it, which is uh, the fact that you were sending Indian people to, uh, you know, offshore. So, so the, the legacy process of doing business uh, is dead. It's cigarette now. Uh, you know, if you say that you're sending Indians to 
Europe or US, it is like saying you're smoking. Uh, I think there is a need, Neeraj, of a tremendous urgency within the Indian IT company saying this battle you cannot fight. This battle is like a cigarette. It is one-way street. People are going to be local driven and therefore unless you present yourself to be a local organization, you're going to lose the battle. Now, if you accept that reality and stop commenting on Trump or H-1B visa and accept that this is going to happen, which I truly believe is going to happen, the question is, it's a competitive advantage, the speed at which you respond to it. So if you can respond to it with innovative ideas, with innovative speed, and restructure your organization so that you put not this whole offshore delivery manager sitting in India, delivering offshore, managing on-site centers, no. You, you completely invert your organization and make it relevant for the new market. Uh, if you do that, I think you can come ahead. So while it is a threat, but it is a threat for everybody. The cost is increasing, it is increasing for everybody. The, the, the price points are going up because the costs are increasing, that is increasing for everybody. The competition is increasing, it is increasing for everybody. But the speed at which you respond, the innovation you used to respond is the difference between boys and, and men. And that is what I'm seeking in different companies and I'm trying to spot and I'm, I, you know, I definitely see some mid-term, mid-tier uh, IT companies, uh, you know, are, are really innovating in the way they are flipping the coin on its head and not wanting to look like an Indian IT company, but look like a digital company, which is more on-site, less offshore, leadership on-site, uh, delivery onshore. So they, they are flipping the coin and they are looking more like Accenture and less like the Indian IT. So I think when the large cap Indian ITs recognize the urgency for change, I think they can beat everybody. So I'm waiting for that recognition. I'm waiting for that big, bold risk to be taken. And I think if they do that, and remember, we have faced this before. Uh, when the application business was going down, the BPO got created, remote infrastructure management got created, uh, engineering got created, so organization transformed themselves to address the new services. And I think when our processes of sending people on site is getting threatened, the organization process has to transform, organization structure has to transform, and new innovation in the way we deliver has to come in. So not just digital, 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 but I think new way of delivering services to our client has to come in. And that is something I, I'm hoping that I will hear uh, in the coming, coming quarters. Vinny, do you believe that the predictability of revenue growth for IT, Indian IT firms though, is getting challenged, whether mid caps or large caps, but the predictability of revenue growth is getting challenged? Uh, <laughs> Neeraj, I, you know, is Accenture saying that? You know, they are growing lock, stock and barrel. They're growing faster than they, they worked before because they're increasingly becoming more relevant. Their digital strategy was launched about seven years ago. And they said, we will forget the legacy business. They were losing legacy business. And they said that we will become very relevant uh, to our customers. And Deloitte did that. And, you know, many, many companies attempted that. I think the question is, you know, growing in single digit or growing in low, upper, double digit in a, in a environment where people are spending billions and billions of dollars in digital revenue, uh, revolution, is that a fair ask? I don't think so. I, I think we can have a bigger appetite for growth. And I believe that the bigger appetite can happen. We can go back to high teen growths. Uh, if we get our digital strategy right, if we get the innovation of delivery right, if we get our near shore uh, capability development deployment right, I think if that happens, uh, and I, I hope it will happen, uh, we, we should get back into high teen growth. They, you know, low, uh, single digit growth, <laughs> At least uh, it's difficult for me to digest. In an environment where you, know, you ask every CEO, you, I mean, I, fortunately, because I'm not involved with IT services side, I'm involved with a lot of customers, and every customer is struggling with their digital revenues. Every single customer is trying to get to the six billion digital identity. So everybody's spending increasing. So everybody is increasing their IT budget. They're spending more and more. They have more pain areas than before. IT and technology is the only solution which, which can solve it. In all this environment, how can you not grow? 
So I believe it's just a matter of getting the strategy right, put your head down, get your strategy right, and double-digit growth in high teens could be a reality, should be a reality. Interesting. Okay. So, Vineet, lastly, if you were to wear the investor's hat, would you believe that these companies can be growth companies if some of those changes happen? And unless they do that, the graph is looking like going lower. So, Neera, this is what I would say that to answer that question, I, you know, instead of looking at the Indian IT uh, leaders, I, I look at global leaders in the IT sector. And I met I met a lot of them. And I still believe that the Indian IT leaders are amongst the smartest today, are amongst the smartest uh, in the business. Uh, they are sharp, uh, they are hungry, uh, they are ambitious, uh, they think a lot, uh, and uh, there is a hunger. And, and because we are what we call a promoter-led culture, uh, most of the companies are led by very hungry uh, promoters, therefore there is a board level pressure. Uh, on the CEO to demonstrate uh, innovation, to demonstrate growth. So I think uh, our boards, uh, Indian IT boards, and our CEOs are not going to accept, uh, you know, uh, what what you call stagnant growth. Or I don't think Indian IT is going to die a slow death. I, you know, not under the watch of the current boards and not under the watch of the current smart CEOs. I think they're going to figure a way out of coming out of this. Now. The reason I, I always push, and you know, I'm not just pushing in this conversation, but I push them when I meet them. I think you know, they are capable, the others are sleeping. You have to meet the other companies to understand there is an intellectual the advantage which the Indian IT companies have. They can do more. Uh, they can get more market share. They can take more risk. Uh, they can be a little more aggressive. Uh, they can they can ignore quarter on quarter for some time and go for go for the kill. Uh, digital is there, you have to go for the kill. Uh, and they can, so I, I believe they will. They, they have the smarts, <laughs> they have the board mandate. Uh, I, I am still positive about them. I just have to see it executed, but I'm positive. I'm, I think they, if anybody can do it, India Pharma, India IT, uh, these are the two of the brightest uh, industries in my mind uh, which can take which can make India grow big globally okay we need we'll leave it at that thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us today and giving us your thoughts appreciate your time